Together, we'll explore 18th century life and connect it to present day experiences. We'll look at everything from fashion to science and economy to archaeology. We'll take a closer look at our past and present. Join us each month on our live streams and submit your own questions. Or watch past episodes and start your own conversations. The past has something for everyone. So come join us as we discover the past. Would you like to be a part of CW Kids Ask next school year? Send us your question and it could be answered in a brand new video. We're collecting questions about the colonial economy, daily life, the Williamsburg community, and the American Revolution. Email us at cwkidsask at cwf.org and watch for your question to be answered by Colonial Williamsburg. Study law, Jefferson. Study men. I do remember the last time I saw her. She was standing on an auction block. We intend for independence. He tells me that he wants liberty and equality. But fear within a city. A free white English woman. Of course, Lord Cornwallis himself. Friends, you have been a delight. I, it is always a pleasure. The dignity and worth of human personality. I am certain that you are well aware of this, but uh, from the time that Virginia was first established along with our language and government, we brought a church, the established church. Ah, uh, the Act of Toleration. Well, that was passed in uh, 1689 under William and Mary. Dissenters uh, could not hold public office, had none of the civil capacities of other British subjects, and yet they were taxed to pay the establishment church. Our family was very much involved uh, in that, laying the foundation for the established church here in Virginia, a connection between government and church. But by the 1740s, there were converts inspired by the emotional revivalism of awakening preachers, such as George Whitfield and Jonathan Edwards. They were known as New Lights, and those who formed into churches known as the Separate Baptists. Separate Baptists, who denied the authority of government to have any say whatsoever in Virginia. They believed that uh, they were commissioned to preach not by government, no, but rather by God himself. Now, the first of those here in Virginia were the Marshalls, uh, Daniel and Martha, and Martha's brother, Shubal Stearns. They uh, migrated south to North Carolina, formed the first Baptist church there in 1755, Sandy Grove. They built the church before they built their homes. As uh, for my own part, I was awakened to my lost condition under the preaching of the Reverend David Thomas in 1764. Uh, my brothers and I were also inspired by Colonel Samuel Harris. He encouraged us to hold meetings, and we did so in my tobacco barn. So the Baptists, the separate Baptists, preached wherever they could, mostly with permission, but sometimes without permission. Many illiterate, yet illumined by wisdom from above, undismayed by the terrific hosts of Satan, 
backed by the strong arm of civil government. Broad is the road that leads to... And uh, men of the established church took issue with that. And uh, Baptist preachers, separate Baptists, began to be arrested. Not so much for uh, not getting a license, but much more so for disturbing the peace for their gatherings. And they found themselves being put in prison. But that did not... Uh, Counselor Cart. Elijah Craig, may I offer you a hand? It's good to see you, sir. You know, I, I know you're brother and heard your brother Lewis on a number of occasions preach up in the northern neck. Uh, I've only heard you once. Well, I just heard you speaking of persecution. You know, Lewis was among the first uh, in prison back in 1768. Is that right? Uh, yes. Yeah, so there are, we know of over 150 examples of a Baptist preacher either imprisoned or beaten up for nothing more than the crime of preaching the gospel of peace. Were you yourself, uh, Elijah? Put in prison? Uh, two times in Orange County and two in Culpeper where they put me in an inner cell in the center of the building so I couldn't preach to passers-by on the street through the, the bars of my uh, cell window. Um, but uh, like Paul, it is, uh, it is not a punishment but a glory. Hmm. If you suffer with him, you shall reign with him. Yes. You know, we thought all that had ended in uh, 76 with the 16th article of the Virginia Declaration of Rights, when it oh. promised us the free, free exercise of religion. According to the dictates of conscience. Yes, sir, but that was not the case with no disestablishment of the government no, church. I witnessed we that. We remained uh, second class citizens. I witnessed that myself two years after the Declaration. Yes, of Rights. I'm, I'm curious about your conversion. Well, I, I had a, a, a personal experience first, which made me. Uh, more uh, uh, closer to God and to seek His will in my life, but I began to attend Presbyterian and Baptist and Methodist meetings, but uh, I think uh, uh, it was under the influence of Lewis Lunsford uh, uh, in uh, September of 78 that, that, that drew me especially to his church, the Moratica Church. But uh, I have to say, sir, having heard your brother and yourself uh, and other separate uh, Baptist preach, uh, it, it, it brought me brought me to God, and I was baptized in September of 78. Ah, and well, soon after that came uh, Mr. Jefferson's Bill 82. Ah, yes. And we oh, thought yes. That would, uh... Every man shall be free to profess and by argument maintain his opinions in matters of religion, and that the same shall in no wise diminish, enlarge, or affect their civil capacities. Unfortunately, the Government of Virginia didn't see fit to pass that bill. It was, it was too much disestablished. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I suppose uh, for them it, uh, it was. It was a threat. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Mr. Henry offered his general assessment, uh, religious taxation to the denomination of your choice. Yes, well, uh, Mr. Henry can't be faulted for that. Uh, I think he had, uh, he had the best interest of uh, religion in mind, but... That was still establishment of church. Good day. I am the Reverend Gowan Pamphlet, pastor, co-founder of the only Baptist church in Williamsburg, the first Baptist church. We started about 17 and 76, the year of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, safer time, I would say, for Baptists uh, and Methodist, Presbyterian even, to start to meet uh, as a congregation because we were not deemed to be legally recognized as a church, the only church in Virginia and, of course, nine of the colonies uh, would be the Church of England. But thank God, I believe, through the planting of the seeds of the fires of the Great Awakening, starting in about 1730, uh, and those three preachers, the Reverend George Whitfield, the Reverend John Wesley, Charles Wesley, those that planted those seeds of the first Great Awakening, those fires burn, and I mean burn all through 13 colonies. And through those from 1730, 
I believe until 1776, those fires burned us right into the war, uh, to declare war against the mother country, against Great Britain. And I think a lot of the reason is not only because of the tea in Boston's Harbor or even taxes on many, many different goods, but I believe because of religious freedom. Religious freedom is something we did not have before 1776. Many denominations were not able to practice their teachings and become, a, as you would say, church, uh, because the state church would not allow that. The state government would not allow that. But thank God, thank God, jubilee, jubilee. In this year of our Lord, 1786, we are now a, having a statues of, uh, of, of freedom and religion. Oh, Brother hey, Gowan Pamphlet. I cannot believe my eyes. That was Colonel Robert Carter III. Good to see you. And, and look who's with me. Alan. Elijah Craig, Reverend. Pre pleasure to see you. Good brother. seeing you today. Especially my considering Lord. all we have to You really to arrive at this God. momentous occasion. <laughs> <laughs> Sightful so eyes. Sightful so eyes. Shall we sit? Yes, 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 yes. Gentlemen, gentlemen. I, uh, <clears throat> it's a bit dangerous uh, <clears throat> as a layman sitting between two renowned Baptist preachers. I'm liable to get a double dose of the Holy Spirit today. Well, we often had that blessing come upon us for those many, many years that we had been on the run and having to hide out to worship and many of the sufferings of the jailhouses that we were put in. I mean, there's so many things happened to us, but I'll tell you, my brothers, I think we have arrived now at the time where... We can't be stopped now. None of us, none of us. Smith, I think we have some people that might have uh, some queries, questions. Do you have uh, any, any of those? We, we have folks uh, gathered, not just here in Virginia, but from across the nation and indeed across the world. Uh, I, I think it's um, an honor indeed to be uh, speaking with all three of you gentlemen and especially uh, gentlemen, as, as uh, engaged with religion as you are in this new country, attempting to, uh, to gain religious liberties that are seen around the world. Uh, the, the first question I, is, uh, is about, well, speaking about people around the world, is, uh, is uh, your origin story. Mr. Craig, uh, what did, uh, where did Baptist come from? What is the origination of uh, the, the Baptist faith? That happens to be an area of interest uh, of mine, and I can uh, share what uh, I have learned from my studies. Um, the story begins in 1608, when a group of separatists left England uh, to uh, flee from uh, religious persecution and seek asylum in Holland. There, uh, they had uh, vigorous debates on what should constitute church membership. Their inevitable conclusion was that uh, Christ himself tells us that one must be born again. And they found that the baptism of infants was uh, in no way based in scripture. And uh, this is the, uh, the essential distinction that defines the, the Baptist denomination apart from uh, other Protestant bodies is this uh, insistence upon the necessity of being born again. Uh, in 1612, they returned and founded the first Baptist church in London. This group was led by a man named Thomas Helwes, who is thought to be the first individual to ever speak up on behalf of religious liberty and separation of state. Uh, he published his short declaration on the mystery of iniquity, in which he wrote that men's religion is betwixt God and themselves. The king shall not answer for it. Neither may the king judge between God and man. Aye. And for those words, Mr. Hellis spent the rest of his life behind bars. Uh, here in America, it was uh, Mr. Roger Williams who was banished from the Massachusetts colony precisely because of his belief in religious liberty and separation of church and state. He founded the Rhode Island colony in the city of Providence. He uh, planted the first Baptist church in America. Uh, Mr. Williams used the metaphor of a hedge uh, for separation of church and state, a hedge or a wall 
to separate uh, the wilderness of the world from the garden of the church. And he used uh, a term that I adore, or maybe you know this, Gow, and his term for uh, liberty of conscience was soul liberty. Yes. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you for that question. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Carter, uh, since we're speaking of uh, Baptist's origins, mm -hmm. I know uh, that you uh, did not originate upon this globe as a Baptist, but you have since become one. Why did you choose yeah. to become a Baptist? <laughs> well, uh, <clears throat> yes, in truth, I uh, did not uh, begin uh, as a, a Baptist. I, I experienced uh, something of a spiritual reawakening in the spring of 17 and 77. And uh, I, I quickly realized that what I was seeking, I could not find in that church that I was born into, the Protestant Episcopal Church of Virginia. So I began uh, seeking, uh, sometimes near, nearby, sometimes I would uh, ride for miles to, uh, to hear dissenting preachers, uh, not only Baptists, but Presbyterians and, and Methodists as well. And I, I began to find uh, my, my spiritual uh, uh, desires in these, uh, in these dissenting meeting houses. But uh, after a period of about a year, I became closer and closer to, uh, to the Baptists. Um, I, I realized that uh, they had something in their worship services that uh, others did lack, the, the enthusiasm. Uh, the obvious presence of the Holy Spirit uh, in their, their services, and also the fact uh, that all sorts of people attended these, uh, these gatherings. It didn't matter if you were rich or poor. It didn't matter if you were black or white or slave or free. All were welcome, and all were viewed as equals uh, in the eyes of not only God, but, e but each other. Um, I happened to be attending a, a large gathering, 500 or so, uh, at uh, a, uh, a stage that was set up for Lewis Lunsford. He was preaching there to this large group. And it was interrupted by some soldiers uh, armed with swords and pistols uh, and the like. And they demanded that the meeting uh, cease immediately. Uh, Reverend Lunsford uh, responded to them by saying, well, we are protected by the... Uh, 16th article of the Declaration of Rights, free exercise of religion. Well, the soldiers wouldn't have anything of that, so they began making their way through the crowd in a fray, uh, came about. Uh, fortunately, Reverend Lunsford was uh, whisked away in the custody and surrounded by uh, Baptist guards into a house, and, uh, uh, but nonetheless, we were dispersed. And then and there, I realized what those Baptists had that others did not have, and that was Despite persecution and threats of physical harm, their faith was there. I became a Baptist a month later. Joined and was uh, baptized by Lewis Lunsford in Tatusky Creek. Amen. Well, um, I, I'm sorry you went through that extremis, but I'm happy to see the light that it brought you on the other side. Yeah. This is often the case. Uh, those of you uh, watching at home and, and otherwise around the world, uh, please send in your questions. Uh, we have three uh, exemplary uh, members of not just the Baptist faith, but of uh, the faith of mankind before us uh, who, have, who have stepped through the fires of persecution and, and prosecution, and they're now willing to take your questions, any of them. Um, we have a question uh, from a dear friend of ours, Aaron, Aaron Squire, and uh, Aaron wishes to know, did you teach Sunday school as well? Was it just what was professed there on the, at the pulpit? Was the, was, is there ancillary services you also provide? I believe uh, in, my, in my church we had we definitely got to start a type of Sunday teachings uh, early. Uh, remember uh, 18... Uh, century, we make sure that the Baptists have uh, services that last 12 hours on Sunday. Uh, start early on Sunday morning and we don't finish until the sun goes down on that Sunday. So I think the whole 12 hours is a time of school, uh, Bible teaching. Uh, I know a lot of my 
teachers are, are being trained, they do take some time the children separately and do a little teaching to them. And then, of course, I have my three-hour sermon uh, on Sunday morning <laughs> and three-hour sermon on Sunday afternoon. So I, I believe we get enough uh, teaching of the Bible and, 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 and the schooling that I guess you're talking about. Yes, yes. No, we, uh, we, we would be, have been speaking a lot about the Baptist faith, uh, but we would be remiss to, to speak of uh, this new age of even stepping beyond toleration towards freedom for religion um, without talking about other Christians or even non-Christians. Kay wants to know, were there non-Christians in Williamsburg? And if so, have you met them? How are they treated? Are they given the same freedoms as you? No. Mm. Christians. I, I would uh, point out uh, Dr. Desaguera oh, yes. uh, at the public oh, hospital is a, a Jewish I, man. I, uh, I, and uh, I would think that no matter where one goes in the world, there are always uh, atheists not far oh, away. And, and it's important uh, to note that uh, we were struggling for their liberty as well as our own. True, true. Neither should a non believer be forced to pay taxes to a government church. True, true. I believe it's I not many, of course, when the Church of England um, was in, in, in power, in, in religious power through, through at least uh, 11 to 13 colonies, uh, even in Pennsylvania and Rhode Island. Um, most people were uh, required of the, of the Church of England to attend church oh, yes. of that colony by law. So you wouldn't find a, a lot that weren't Christianized or baptized into the Church of England. But now, since we've had now the passing now of the Virginia Statute of Religious Freedom and then now the, the right for you to choose your own denomination, there might be some that might not take up uh, Christianity. They might take other other religions. Certainly. You know? I mean, that might be a change we might see before our very eyes now we hadn't seen before. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Our struggle has not only been for our uh, liberty, but for the liberty of Papists, Mohammedans, Hebrews, ah, right. and all. True, true. Uh, well, so we speak of a congregation, we think of those who, who think alike. But what about those who do not look alike? Barb wants to know, did all races attend the same church, or were even churches segregated in some manner? One of the things that I particularly enjoyed uh, about the, uh, enjoy about the Baptist church is that we, we all gather together and worship together. Um, whether you, uh, you own property like myself, or whether you are a tenant farmer, whether you are black, uh, white, even slaves uh, in our church, I'm pleased to say. We, we worship together, we, uh, we sing together, we uh, commune together. Mm -hmm. um, there is a sense of uh, equality uh, in the church. Uh, that is not true, certainly, of, uh, of all churches. Certainly, uh, previously in the uh, Church of England, uh, you would often um, see uh, in the services Negroes, but they were there because their master or their mistress required them True, to be there absolutely, to attend absolutely, them. Absolutely. Not for, uh, and certainly there was encouragement uh, of their spiritual growth, but that, uh, I do not believe that was the, uh, the entire reason that they were bid to come to, uh, to church. True. And you, in fact, uh, you three gentlemen, if I could be so bold, uh, extended to each other a, a sense of equality when you entered into this room, did you not? Uh -huh. mm. We did. We did. It's something that we did, and I don't don't know if people today are uh, starting to notice this as much as uh, before before the seventeen seventy six war. Uh, and what we did was what we call the uh, right hand of fellowship, the extension of the hand to your brother as as your brother or, or even the sister as your sister. Um, it's uh, something that was not allowed uh, much in. Anglican societies, pristine Anglican societies, uh, they, they frowned upon the fact of one uh, shaking hands or, or offering your hand as a right hand of fellowship. They looked at that, unfortunately, as more of someone uh, saying that you're equal. If a slave shakes the hand of a white preacher, uh, that was 
too much for some of the Anglicans because that means that that person is uh, telling the enslaved person that that, that person is uh, his brother or his sister and welcome them into the kingdom of God or to the church. But uh, that was some uh, places not allowed. Uh, and and for, uh, for whatever reason, thank God is eliminating that, thank mm -hmm. the Lord. We don't have to worry about that. My friends, uh, um, if I might, yes. uh, there's one thought I, I believe we should add uh, to this, this uh, fine question. Uh, it was uh, our enthusiastic welcome of Negroes and the zeal we inspired in them that was particularly egregious to the Church of England. Uh, and we must never forget that there were many who sought our prayer meetings who were intercepted by slave patrollers, and we shall never know their numbers nor uh, what suffering they endured at the hands of those men. Very much so, yeah. very much so. Well, it is not uncommon for the status quo to continue to retain and maintain power. And when, uh, when those power structures begin to, to break down, even by social custom, by the simple shaking of a hand, what a, what a foundational shake does that quake across the foundation of the old status quo. So congratulations to you. Uh, uh, speaking of status quo, what has been and what might be, Catherine wants to know, specifically of you, Reverend Pamphlet, did your mistress share in your religious opinions? Ah, uh, uh, Catherine, you're quite intuitive. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I, I wouldn't be uh, able to be ordained as, as a Baptist preacher or uh, have my church now, First Baptist Church now in Williamsburg, if I hadn't had the blessings of my owner and my mistress of the King's Arms Tavern. I was her enslaved, uh, one of the 13 uh, enslaved at the tavern and of course would not have been in probably in any time um, allowed to preach or especially in the open uh, but on the, on the time of the entering of the Baptists into Virginia coming from places like Rhode Island and Pennsylvania and other places the numbers of them coming in into the city uh, uh, they opened their arms and welcomed me Reverend Jeremiah Walker never never forget him I mean first Baptist I ever heard preach uh, here in, in uh, Williamsburg in Virginia. And I heard him on a day he was walking down the middle of the, of the Duba Glossa Street, Bible in hand. There's neither Jew nor Gentile, bond nor free, male nor female. We all want in Christ. Well, I had never heard that actually said that way before. <laughs> but after his uh, meeting that night and told us that we were all created out of of the blood of, of the two that God created, Adam and Eve. And, and that made us all equal in the eyes of God. I had never heard that before. But thank God that message has gotten through. Yes. Amen. No. Uh, Pat wants to know uh, if itinerant preachers in general faced problems within their own government. Was it just the Baptist? Was it everyone? It was everyone as far as uh, I know. Hmm. I mean, I, uh, I would say that uh, the, the Presbyterians, um, Lutherans, um, Quakers, uh, even the, uh, our sibling faith, the regular Baptists, mm -hmm. uh, often agreed to a uh, policy of toleration and would uh, register with the government mm -hmm. um, and uh, obtain a license to preach. And it yeah. was our refusal to abide this toleration policy uh, that resulted in our persecution. Ah. This, uh, as Mr. Thomas Paine wrote in 1776, mm -hmm. toleration is not the opposite of intolerance. It is its counterfeit, and both mm -hmm. are despotisms. Mm -hmm. One assumes the right of denying you your liberty of conscience, and the other assumes the right of granting it. Aye, aye, aye. Thank God for Mr. Paine. You know, we have several questions left and uh, just a little time remaining. I'm wondering if we can um, try to get through all five of these questions in five minutes. What do you think? I know <laughs> I all don't. Means. It'll be a challenge. We'll, yeah, try. we'll, we'll try. It's <laughs> a tall order. I know. 
Um, all right, so uh, Tina wants to know if uh, most slave-owning members of the Church of England remained in the church, even post-independence, uh, the Episcopal Church, or did they fall away? Did they create a new church? Uh, that's a very good question, uh, Tina. Um, thus far, it, uh, from, from those uh, gentlemen, uh, property owners who own slaves uh, like myself, I think the majority of them are remaining loyal to what is now the Episcopal Church of Virginia because, uh, well, they have their own personal reasons for that, but I, I think also it still points to the order of society. And um, anything that challenges that particular order, whether it be uh, religious uh, or whether it be the, the, the order as they see it of uh, slave and master, anything that challenges that, uh, it, it, it's not something that they would uh, tend to follow. Uh, I, uh, <clears throat> I am an exception in that regard. I, I caused not only a great surprise amongst the members of my family, but uh, a number of my neighbors uh, were, were quite surprised when uh, they learned that I had uh, become a Baptist. So I would say, uh, to sum up, uh, I think majority uh, have uh, remained uh, in the uh, former Church of England. I thank you, sir. Uh, the questions are still rolling in, so we're going to keep pounding through them. Uh, Roy Ann, I hope I'm uh, saying your name correctly, but Roy Ann asks how much of this sentiment about religious freedom affected the uh, what uh, they call the founders' thoughts and actions. Uh, I think uh, just just given my my opinion of the matter, I believe. Hearing in the tavern where I worked on a daily basis in the main dining area, waiting on tables and listening to some of the founders that had gone to Philadelphia to, to sign the Declaration of Independence. And now, of course, I believe the Constitution Convention is about to, to mount up, mm -hmm. and some of them will be up there, uh, often discussed among themselves at the very fact of, of not uh, having this word dissenter be a part of the of the new of the new day of what we are in now, the country called now the United States of America, uh, very much on the mind, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, what? Mr. James Madison. And, and uh, of course we got to thank uh, Mr. George Mason for his his mm -hmm. uh, Bill of Bill of Rights and then, and then of course uh, the free exercise of religion according to dictates of conscience. We got to thank him and, and of course Mr. Jefferson. Absolutely. Uh, who is often uh, even voice, Mr. P well, Patrick Henry, got him many times that he has taken up cause of the, even three Baptists he defended in Hanover yeah. and the courthouse. Right. Uh, uh, and then, of course, many of the other founders uh, did believe that, that this whole idea of religious freedom was very important. Uh, and now, with the Virginia Statutes of Religious Freedom by Mr. Jefferson, uh, it is now actually now sealed the document. Mm -hmm. We are now no longer dissenters. Yeah. Uh, I believe history will show that uh, the American Revolution began long before uh, the first shots were fired in the Revolutionary mm -hmm. War. Mm -hmm. I, 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 uh, I understand uh, Mr. Jefferson said as early as 1771 that the polity of our congregation, the way that uh, each congregation is a little republic, mm -hmm. uh, could be used to govern uh, the North American colonies, which, of course, are now uh, free and independent states. Amen. And uh, we shall see if he was right. <laughs> well, we, uh, we have a, speaking of that polity, uh, we have a question from Tina, which I think applies to that. Um, and Tina asks if the Baptist or Methodist churches required tithes uh, from their congregants in order to build and maintain houses of worship or, or maintain charity even for those most vulnerable amongst us? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> I, I can even speak for myself. Now, my congregation now, um, uh, half of the congregation are enslaved people. Uh, uh, most of the free people uh, in my congregation is able to pay, pay the tithe, to, to, to the church, uh, to, to my church, the Baptist church. Uh, but the enslaved people really, really don't have the ready money sometimes to, 
to pay the tithe. But I've devised a plan how to take care of that. And that basically is that uh, all of the enslaved people in my congregation are very talented with some skilled trade. Yes. And I have devised a plan that if they can use that skill that of that of that trade or, or whatever gift they have of talent uh, to help others within the church and the community, that will be going to paying their tithe. Mm -hmm. So paying the tithe with the talent, and then it takes care, also taking care of the needs of the church and the community. We, we, uh, we have time for a, a sort of a, a final question for each of you, which I, I think is going to be profound in uh, especially understanding not just where we have been, but the, the totality of this thing as we take it forward in this current generation, this weight that we bear. Uh, we'll start with you, Mr. Craig. Um, now that you've established religious freedom for you, your people, how do you look back at those years of persecution? Well, our, uh, our movement uh, was born into a Virginia that uh, groaned under the tyranny of a, a rigorous religious intolerance. Yes. And uh, we, uh, therein ro arose the trials of our uh, early gospel labors. Imprisonment. Well, none of us were guilty of the charge. Uh, that, uh, that had us uh, torn away from our callings and our families and barbarously locked into a, a prison hole, a dark, damp dungeon, dirty, no air or light, uh, no bedding. And When I think of those, those years, I, I am reminded of, uh, of a young soldier uh, that I met in uh, 1781, a wounded soldier who uh, had been shot twice. Uh, he had been involved in a skirmish, and when the smoke finally cleared, he found himself lost and alone. And the young man uh, was able to think clearly enough to know which direction he should begin walking in. And Though he bled from two musket ball holes in his body, he was able to walk a distance of several miles back to his regiment where he received medical treatment. And the young man revealed to me that as a boy, he was beaten by his father severely and regularly. This young man was of the firm belief that the beatings he endured as a child saved his life that day on the battlefield due to the high tolerance for pain that it had given him. And I believe our story is like uh, this young man's, a tale of the strength and resilience of the human spirit that was so grossly underestimated by the strong arm of the law which tormented us. For they thought they were shutting us in when in reality they were opening us out. And our confinement led to our enlargement. As a lawyer who defended me in Culpeper County in 1772 said, these Baptists are like chamomile. The, the more you stomp on them, the faster they grow. <laughs> so I, I look back with the sentiments of Paul that it is not a punishment but a glory to be uh, locked into a, a dungeon for the sake of our divine master. And if you suffer with him, you shall reign with him. In those times of imprisonment, I comforted myself with the thought that if the devil is leaving you alone and minding his own business, you must be doing something that is pleasing to him. <laughs> Thanks well, for that question. All right, well thank said. You. you see why I became a Baptist. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. Well, our, our God is not so weak that he needs a government to prop him up. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Carter, speaking of government and God, what is wrong with the government encouraging or propping up any religion? One might think from first uh, glance at, uh, at that question, what is wrong with the government uh, encouraging religion? It would be difficult to, to, to say anything would be wrong with it. Um, however, um, 
indeed there is, as we have uh, discovered, uh, when uh, the former Church of England was, uh, was being challenged, uh, there were alternatives uh, put forth, uh, the assessment bill by Mr. Henry, in fact, when, rather than tithes from government going to the Church of England, that you could choose which church you wanted your monies to, to go to, or just go to any religious teachers whatsoever. And at first glance, again, that, that looks innocent. And uh, certainly Mr. Henry uh, uh, should be praised for uh, his intentions in that regard. But herein and therein is what lies the difficulty. If government is supporting religion, even all churches, all religions, they do so by monies, by tax monies. If they collect those monies and support those religions, then those churches become accountable to who? Not themselves, not to themselves as individuals, but rather they are accountable to the government. If they are accountable to the government, my friends, then they might have some say into who can preach, where they can preach, and the most dangerous of all is what they can preach. Even encouraging uh, the worship of, uh, worship of God in whatever fashion is dangerous. Government neither can prohibit uh, someone from their beliefs, nor should they encourage it. Well, uh, I, I thank you. Uh, there, we, we exist in a time wherein I think man will always uh, uh, attempt to subvert another's ecclesiastical opinions. And that means there is a, a deep uh, need for understanding where we have been in terms of religious pros prosecution and persecution. Um, so that leads us uh, to the future. Where can we go next? And Mr. Pamphlet, uh, Reverend Pamphlet, I think there's no one better to answer this question than, than what is our hope? What is your hope for our collective religious future? Future. The future is important, sir. And, and I always tell the children, especially those in my congregation and, and the young ones, that they are, they are the future. They are our tomorrow. And I do tell them that they are important in being instructed now of what they need to do when they get to our age and taking the responsibility of the protection of what we fought so hard for for six years, six years of war from Breeze Hill to Yorktown. Many of those Continentals died upon the battlefields from those uh, cannons and, and gunshots and musket fires because they believed in their hearts that they had it in their power to start the world over again. And with the rights of liberty, freedom, equality, and justice, that is what we want individually as Americans now, that we need now to protect for the rest of our natural lives those freedoms, those rights that some might be plotting right now, countries and individuals, to take it away from us. We must be vigilant and be on guard as a sentry on duty to protect them for not only us uh, today, but for the future, for those children, and make sure they tell their children, 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 their duty is to protect those rights. So we continue to have a country that people can come to enjoy the right for the rest of their natural life, religious freedom.
This project was funded in part by a generous grant from the National Endowment for the Humanities.